Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? I'm doing well, thank you. Hello, friends. Well, I have a recent study in my hand right here from George Barna that says 51% of churchgoers don't know of the Great Commission. Yeah. So the question for 51% of our friends is what is the Great Commission? Yeah, 51% of churchgoers. We just did a Real Truth Real Quick not long ago answering the question, is God ever pleased when a church shuts down? All right, there's some relevance. Go watch that one. And it kind of relates to this. Listen, I, I love the fact that when someone goes to church, they may not know what a, uh, the Great Commission is yet because there's a lot of people that were around Jesus who uh, were just learning about who Jesus claimed to be and about the revelation of God made known through him. So this stat in and of itself doesn't necessarily alarm me um, because hopefully it's because a lot of people are inviting their non-believing friends to come and see the goodness of God. But, you know, uh, the one thing I would say about that stat, because I read this study, it would be one thing if the other 49% did, but it turns out, even in the study, 51% said, I have no idea, okay? Another 6% said, I'm not sure, all right? And another 25% said, I think so, but I can't remember it, which if you remember the math on that, that means only 17% of the people that they interviewed that were churchgoers in the places they interviewed them knew what the Great Commission was. So either they're a very evangelistic church that's doing a great job of bringing in every week, you know, um, what, 83% more non-believers than believers, or they're not doing a good job of fulfilling the Great Commission, because this is what it says. In, in Matthew chapter 28, that's where the Great Commission can be found. So we ought to just, you know, quote it. Um, Matthew 28, uh, it, it says this in verses 19 to 20, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Okay, it doesn't say make converts, it doesn't say make churchgoers. It says make disciples. Disciples, the word literally means learners, which is why that stat in and of itself may not be a problem if it changes as people are hanging around with you. Somebody learns what the Great Commission is once they become a believer. They're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And watch this, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And then he reminds them, hey, lo, I will be with you even to the end of the age. Now look, this is a big deal. Because it says in verse 17 of Matthew 28 that all authority, or 18, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. And he's saying, this is what you need to be about. It's why we're here. It's why we exist. The church is a mission. and The church isn't a place. The church is a people that live on mission. What's the mission? is to make Jesus known and to help people learn about him. And when they embrace who he is, they don't just do it in a said way, they have a transforming experience, okay, where they begin to uh, obey and, and, and identify with Jesus first. Through baptism, we have a real truth real quick on what baptism is, where you identify with the death burial, underwater if you will, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the same power that allowed Jesus to live a perfect and sinful life and raise him from the dead is the power that works in you. And the life which you now live in the flesh, Galatians 2.20, you live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself up for you. And so you learn his ways and you do what the one who has all authority commands you to do. That is what uh, the Great Commission is. It is what the church is called to do. We like to tell people that if you have a great commitment to the Great Commandment, what's the Great Commandment? That's found in Matthew 22 where somebody came up and said, Jesus, what's the most important thing we can be about in terms of a command? He says, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he says, that's the first and greatest commandment. And the second one is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. You, you can't love God if you don't love what God loves. Okay, you can't say that he's your king if you don't do what he does. And he says, all the laws and all the prophets point to this. So a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission is what makes a great church. So uh, if somebody's watching this and um, you have never realized that Jesus wants you to do more than go to church, he doesn't want you just to know the great commandment and the Great Commission. He wants you to faithfully live out the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. But it's why we're here. We are not here to make a living, my friend. We are here to make a difference. We are the hands and feet of Christ. The church today is the body of Jesus, okay? And we're here to complete what is lacking in his sufferings, the scripture says. And so in many ways, just like Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God, the church is called to be the visible image of the invisible Jesus okay, and make him known and to walk in his ways. Jesus says, if you do this, 
even greater works than I have done, you will do, okay, if you abide with me. So let's go, church, as I like to say. All right, well, hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, we appreciate you coming across our YouTube channel, but we don't want you to just stay on YouTube watching videos. We want to see you go out there and fulfill the Great Commission, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick. Mm -hmm.